This is the TE amplifier that we took out of the 14511 system some months ago. And it seems to have very low power output. So we're going to break into it and see about replacing the two final transistors. The amplifier sits on a heat sink, a rather large one, and uh, can put out as much as 160 watts. After pulling the top off, we see the exposed electronics on the circuit board. Here are the two transistors that we're going to have to remove. And we're going to move some of the resistors and coils. And also the two copper heat sinks that are on the collector circuit of the transistor. And these guys will probably be the hardest thing to remove. I am going to make do with a 100 watt soldering iron with what we call a screwdriver tip. This tip is approximately the width of the circuit strips in the RF circuit. Also we may use some solder wick and uh, we may use a, uh, a, a solder sucker as well. We're going to start by removing some of these components on the circuit. Uh, to get them out of the way and um, then work on the heat sink on each of the transistors uh, to remove those. This circuit has exhibited a self oscillation uh, most likely due to one transistor that has failed and the other one going into oscillation. When the RF is uh, excited and then uh, unexcited it stays oscillating on its own. Well, that was a little easier getting that off than I thought it would be. We're just going to have to clean it up now. We're just taking the excess solder off of uh, the components. Right, let's see if we can get this uh, little feedback inductor off of here. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard. It wasn't. Take some of the solder off of this area. This is the base, base of the circuit. Okay, let's uh, turn the board around and uh, start cleaning up this side of the, uh, the circuit the best we can. And let's, uh, let's remove the inductor again the feedback conductor okay and the other end of the feedback circuit now yeah, let's see if we can remove it The balancing resistor which is looks like it is shot it is flaking and falling apart get it going and uh, remove it off okay Looking good let's clean it up Looks like we're clean and uh, let me get a close-up of all of this and this is what it uh, looks like after we've removed most things we got uh, one more major thing to remove well two more we got that uh, capacitor there and uh, we got to get that out of the uh, the circuit and then uh, of course loosen up all of the transistor leads that are laying flat on the circuit. All right, I think we need a 
have a little bit more room, so I'm going to take the bolts out of the transistors. This will give us a little more room to unsolder the capacitors next to the input and output. All right, let's get this capacitor out of here. All righty. There we go. All right, let's see if we can lift some of the transistor tabs. Yeah, we'll apply some heat on them. There's one. See if we can get this guy. Okay. All right, let's try the collector side here. These are all the emitter tabs on the outer corners and actually the whole thing is coming off alrighty that's one down and one more to go All right, a little solder Let's see if we can get this one lifted. And like that, we lift it up. Get it out of the way. Next one over here. solder on the tip here to there we go already okay let's work on this side now turned it around and again a little bit more solder on the uh, soldering tip there to make Good contact with the board. Try to get this guy down here. And finally, other guy there. And there we have it. Alright, let's do a little more cleanup over here. Alright. Now we need to look a little bit at the Stuff that's in here, make sure it's not carbonized. All right, we've got a brand new pair of 2SC 2782s. These are matched pairs so that they balance well in the circuit. All right, we need to spread some thermal grease. This is white thermal grease on the back of the transistor and not get it on other. 
All right, now the next thing we need to do is put it in, but make sure that the the collector is toward the output side of the amplifier, which we have here. All right, next I have some liquid solder flux. And uh, we're going to use this and paint it over all of the transistor leaves. We'll stick it underneath as Let's well. Let's try soldering some of these guys and we'll hold the heat, heat down. Roll off of the tip. Let it cool just a little bit. And we'll go to the other side and do the same. All right, let's go to the collector side and get the uh, collector soldered in. Note that this is just the first pass for tacking the transistor in. I'll go back later and clean up these connections. To now the uh, base side. And one more time, we will prep the other transistor with thermal compound. Alrighty. Looks like that should be good. No excess. Get the small tab to the output side of the circuit. All right, and let's get some screws put in, get this thing seated and in position so we can solder it. There we go. And let's see. One more screw for the other side. Snug, but not tight yet. Snug, but not tight. Tighter. And tighter. Alright, that'll allow the grease to seep out from the edges as it needs to. Alright, and let's put some rosin solder flux. 
liberally on the circuits. That should do it. Now let's get the soldering iron going and uh, Cool just a little bit. Don't want to overheat the transistor. Excellent. All right, let's go to the other side. Okay, and one more time. Now we have the emitters tacked down. All four of those that we just soldered are the emitter junction. Let's go to the collector. I'm going to do it this way. Okay. Looking good. And back to the base. Now we got to replace the internal collector heat sinks that go right across the collector here. Now let's tack it over here. Finish tacking it on all sides. Inside's all tacked. And the back side looks good as well. A little more solder right here. And I think we've got it. All right, let's see if we can uh, tack the other internal collector heat sink to the board. We'll hold it down and just apply a little heat to the collector of the transistor around the corner. Okay, now we need to finish tacking it on the inside, although it's got solder there, just not as enough solder. That looks good. Take a little closer look at what it looks like. Let's see if we can get a few of the uh, incidentals put back on, uh, like uh, this piece of uh, resistor for the uh, return circuit. And we'll do the same on the other side. Position the inductors that come off the base circuit. And let's see if we can solder that down. Here we go. And likewise on the other side. Okay, so now we have the 
turn circuit in place except for the resistor that came out of here. Uh, that is still to come. All right, getting uh, things back to put together. Well, we have a couple more components to mount, including this strip line capacitor, surface mount capacitor, which will go right in here. All right, we're going to put uh, a little bit of rosin here and over here as well. All right, it's tacked. Let's try to heat this thing up and solder it underneath. Okay. Now, if you remember the SPAD resistor, we're going to have to make up a new one to uh, replace it. Okay, here's our replacement uh, resistor. Okay, with everything finished, one last thing to do, and that is to measure the power. And I'm putting in uh, 50, oh, 30 watts RF power, and let's see what we're going to get. This is a 250 watt slug. And we're pushing just about exactly 150 watts out for 30 watts in. Uh, that is excellent. We'll take that. 